All right, so today, June 5th, 2012, Cloudera Manager 4 as well as CDH4 were released, GA. Uh, you can go to cloudera.com to read up more on how to download this thing. Uh, download Cloudera Manager 4, get yourself started up with Hadoop. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just recording this because I don't want to lose track of what I've done uh, for this quick install. Uh, I just want to test this thing out, see how it works, nice and easy. You'll notice I've already set up a quick firewall as well as a... Um, a host only subnet um, for the purposes of uh, this network. Now, actually, I'm not going to mount the ISO right away because I really don't like that easy install thing. So, CentOS 64 bit is what we're going to be using. I'm going to call this guy Base just because that's a cool name. Stick to the defaults here. We're going to bump the RAM up to 1500 and uh, drop this thing on the host only network, which I've dropped this firewall on. Uh, we're going to create a new virtual disk, it's going to be SCSI, and now if you were doing this on your own, you don't need to attach uh, the network to this guy right here. Okay, You would just connect to bridge networking, probably the easiest way to get started. All right. Now, I'm using VMs, but uh, normally you would do this obviously on real machines. So, we're good. And... I'm going to attach that ISO image of CentOS so that I can boot this thing and install it. Now I always do uh, uh, an expert text install because I really can't stand the GUI for, in doing, for, for doing installs of uh, CentOS or for that matter of anything. So, um, But you can go through the GUI if you like. Okay, So really we're just kind of defaulting to the basic install of the OS. We're going to have one big flat mount point, um, lots of space there. As you saw, I bumped it to 80 gigs on the uh, virtual disk. So we skip the media test since it's not real media. And welcome to CentOS, English, US. And uh, we're going to reinitialize all devices. Sure. Give myself a password. Go OK. Actually, I better make sure that I know what I typed. <laughs> Use anyway, all right, and uh, use entire drive, and write changes. Okay, so uh, we're just going to do a very, very base install. Uh, we won't even have Perl installed or anything. This is like a really naked CentOS install. RHEL works pretty much the same way. You'll notice it's not, I'm not being prompted for packages or anything like that. I'm not using a kickstart file. This is completely interactive, the install. Okay, no cheating here. Now, um, what can I say about this? Um, what I'm going to do is install this VM, uh, do all the um, uh, uh, cluster specific modifications, like basically all the changes I want to do to all the nodes. I'll do that first in the base, and then I'm just going to clone the base off. Okay, so it'll be a really fast way to build out a cluster um, for testing. Okay. Of course, it's not a real cluster. We're using VMs all sitting on one box. Um, but I'm stuck here late at night in, well, in California. And um, yeah, this is kind of fun. So let's see. Install is almost done, as you can see. Um, there's a bunch of, actually this is a package we don't really need. So a kickstart could actually lean this down quite a bit. Uh, we could probably get the distro, my guess is down to under 500 megs. And um, there are strategies to of course RAM disk the whole thing and uh, it's up to you. Okay, but what I want to do is just quickly show you, potentially a developer or an end user, how to get Hadoop fast. You'll notice that we're doing the install straight. It's clean. Uh, I'm, I'm not cheating in any way. I haven't uh, pre-cooked this. I'm not running some magical scripts or anything like that. It is taking a bit of time. As I said, nothing magical.
Okay, so reboot. So what I'm going to do are what I consider to be basic modifications to the box. Um, so we log in as root. We're going to edit the resolve comp file. Uh, I want to put in a search for example.com. That's the domain we're going to use. And uh, name server of 192.168.11. All right. So that's that. Oops. We're also going to create a Oops, uh, sysconfig network. There we go. Uh, we want to create a gateway entry here because that's going to be standard across all the nodes. We want to disable SE Linux. That's right. Again, this is just meant to be quick. And uh, also kill IP tables while we're at it. All right. Uh, now, I also cannot stand this uh, plugin, this mirror thing, um, fastest mirror conf thing. So I usually kill that, okay, because I, I just really don't like that hunting that it does. And uh, we're going to just quickly bring up the network. Whoops, of course. Uh, network scripts. Just gonna take that out, take that out. Sure. Actually, you know what? Take out the quotes too. Absolutely not necessary. IP address is gonna be 192.168.101. Um, I should better make it 100. Net mask 255.255.255.0. And uh, proto equals static. All right. Ah, did I really do that? I did. All right. Really is real time. All right. Uh, so now what we want to do is just quickly, um, I want to install a few things that I'm going to need. So um, uh, install Perl and open SSH clients. All right. While that's going, I'm going to use Alt F2. Oh. Okay. Hmm, there we go. Strange. Okay. Um, I'm going to blame that on uh, <laughs> this firewall that I quickly built. So. Um, very simple, we just install, I, I need Perl. Uh, open SSH clients are gonna help us later because I don't really feel like uh, local, uh, sitting at the local console for these, um, the setup. And uh, while we're waiting, yeah, okay, I'll let this go. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure why I'm getting timeouts on uh, our network connectivity here, so let, let me just blame it on my internet. Um, but at least this is nice and fast, which is good. There you go, you saw that, it's nice and good, nice and fast. So, uh, once that's done, I want to install VMware tools. Okay, so we're just gonna do that really fast. Oops, mount it somewhere, go to temp. Oh, already busy. Well, I'm really having issues with this demo. Dev CD-ROM media. All right, must be going too fast. All right, so do that. Okay, you'll notice what I did there. I'm just running the VMware install script with dash D, which basically says, don't bother me with stuff. Um, and then we're going to do a yum update just to bring all of our packages up to date. Okay. Now I usually like to like, I like to wait till this finishes because um, <clears throat> you never know if there's anything that maybe 
CentOS is updated that uh, VMware is installing right now, but that doesn't make any sense because of course we're not installing any RPMs with uh, the VMware tools here. Uh, you'll notice we don't have X windows and all that other crap installed because we just really don't need it. Um, I mean, yeah, we're trying to kind of build something that approximates what you might have in your cluster. So, um, uh, mm, this host is a little bit on the slow side. I'm on the road just using what I have. So, uh, all right. So, yum dash y update. Now, while that's going, I'm going to do an alt F2 and switch to another virtual console. Okay, so the update's still running over here. I can go back over here and I can do some other stuff while I'm waiting. So I want to create an Etsy host file, or rather augment it with my potent, with my new node names. So N1, N2, oops, 103, N3, N3, and you get the idea. And five, and wow. Okay, uh, and I'm just going to create a new SSH key, and I'm going to do something that I know some of you will cringe at, but I don't care. Uh, I'm just going to do this. So now all the nodes that I clone off of here will have SSH root equivalency across everywhere. Now this is not necessary for Hadoop or anything like that, it's just because I'm a lazy bum. Alright, so we go to SSH D, sorry, SSH uh, config here, and we're going to look for strict host key checking, and we're going to say no. Alright, now what that does is doesn't you know, every time you SSH into a new box, it like hassles you, like, are you sure about the fingerprint, blah blah blah, you know, you just just kill that. Okay, obviously security is uh, <laughs> uh, not of concern here. All right, and my yum updates are still going here. As you can see, the downloads are done. It's actually just doing the install. And um, once we're done with that, the base is ready to go. Okay, I cannot think of anything else I need to do. Um, I think that's pretty much it. So we've made a few changes here that I like. Um, the update should be done soon. Nice. It's now midnight in Toronto and uh, you may have just heard my MacBook DVD drive just makes some noise there. All right, so we want to shut this guy down. Normally I would clean out my uh, bash history and stuff like that because I don't like to leave that kind of crap lingering around and also the log files and whatnot. But anyhow, we're good. This is the base. Okay, so now we're going to make some clones off of there. Okay, so we're going to clone the current state. Call it a link clone. I'm going to call this one. That's very simple. That will be my node one. And go back to the base. Make sure you're cloning the base. Uh, we're going to make a clone of the base again. And I'm going to call this, I'm going to base it off the same snapshot. And I'm going to call this guy two. It's very simple. Go back to the base here, manage, clone, next, off the snapshot that we already created, link clone, three. All right. And I'm just going to finish this off here. Go to a snapshot, link to clone, four. Oh, wow. Why did I pick six? Because. I like punishment. All right, so snapshot, link clone. Uh, we're at five. <laughs> All right, and finally clone next. Off the same snapshot, link clone next. We'll make this ooh, six. <laughs> All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Let's boot one up. 
Okay, so, and while that's going, we'll bring up two, three, four, five, and six. Let's go back to one, should be ready to go. And what we're going to do is change, obviously, the host name. Uh, for this box. And you'll notice I set it to change.example.com so that I would remember to change it. Now, here's the deal. Because this is a new interface, it ends up being enumerated as ETH1. I would normally clean all this up, but I really don't care. So, so I'm just going to do that. And we're gonna, of course, create this config for ETH1. See how easy that was? Make a copy of the file, change the IP for ETH1, and let's just bounce the network. Mm, right, and of course, right, we'll get rid of that file, and we'll bounce the network one more time. And let's just make sure we can ping the world. Yes, I still use sun.com. All right, so I'll just bounce the box just for fun and we're ready to do the next box. Oops. Um, Okay, so make sure you change the device name to ETH1 and make sure you get this IP right. This is node 2. And we're going to bounce this guy. Uh, do that. Okay. And change that to three and make sure again it's ETH one. Okay, we're gonna make this guy N4. We'll make again this is ETH one, this is one oh four. Bounce that guy, go to node 5, uh, yeah, you can see I'm getting kind of tired here, we're going to make this N5, And before I edit the sixth one, let me just start this next process. So I'm gonna log into my node one here. And uh, what I wanna do is grab the Cloudera Manager. Now normally you would go to the website and download and agree to all this stuff and whatever. I'm just gonna curl it right from the <laughs> location. So it's archive.cloudera.com cm4 for Cloudera Manager 4, installer, latest, uh, Cloudera, manager installer dot bin. That's all one line, by the way. Now, the thing I just downloaded here, I need to make executable with that, shimod plus x, and I just run it. And it says se Linux is enabled, that's interesting. It's disabled, uh-huh. All right, it's almost like an ESL moment. Um, so, you'll notice that Cloudera Manager it's almost like I did this on purpose, right? Um, Cloudera Manager uh, is actually pretty smart. It helps you out. It says, hey, you know, dude, you have to disable SE Linux. And <laughs> in this case, I thought I had done it before I cloned my boxes, but obviously I had a little typo in there. Okay, so, um, so this really helps you out. You'll notice how quickly I'm banging through this without really a lot of effort. Yeah, there we are, and add my D there. 
Okay, we'll go back to node one. It's already rebooted. Proof is up zero minutes. Okay, so uh, we're going to run Cloudera Manager, which I've already downloaded in Shimada Plus X. And this time, there are no prerequisite issues. Now, um, you agree, I accept, I agree, I accept, and it starts downloading all the stuff that we need. So there's the JDK, and you know what? I'm going to finish up with my Node 6 here. Okay, which I'm going to call N6. And, oops. And this is 106. Wow. Just can't find that 6. Oh, yeah, right. And of course, my typo, which now is persistent or exists rather in my base image. So, most people will use a kickstart script or, or sorry, kickstart file to kind of automate the install of these boxes. Um, you can do it whichever way you want, but you can see I managed to bang off these boxes actually pretty fast here. So um, Cloudera Manager is now installed and actually started. So what I can do now is open a browser and navigate to n1example.com 7180, port 7180. And that's what it says right there. So all you have to do is look at what it says. And um, hmm. All right, I have connectivity. I might be going a little bit too fast here again. 7180. There we go. Now, admin, admin. Those are the default credentials, which of course we can change. Now, do you want to upload a license file and use the full version of Cloudera Manager? Nah, I'm only doing six nodes, so just install the free version, continue. Do I want to register? No. There's a link down here to proceed, you click on that. Now, which host am I going to involve? Well, nn1.example.com, space delimited. Now, I'm not going to use any wild carding here. I guess I could go with IP addresses, but uh, anyhow, we do a search, and all this is really doing is just, you know, seeing if it can reach it, and you can see the ping times and whatnot. There we go, we can see that everything's resolving fine, and these resolutions actually happen uh, based on what node one is able to do. Okay, so we're just gonna say install on these hosts, and we're ready to go. What version do we want? Well, I'm looking for four, so which release do we want? Notice I can also, um, bring in a downstream or a down a downstream release. And uh, I can also point to a custom repository, which I've already kind of downloaded or cached, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to yank this right from Cloudera, nice and easy. So that was easy, right? All I did was I selected CDH4. That was the default latest release. And we're going to pull this right out of um, uh, right out of Cloudera. Now we're going to authenticate as root on all the hosts. Okay. And um, uh, yeah, now I could just do this. I've already actually created a, you know, a key pair, but I'm just gonna provide the credentials here. So there's my root password for all the nodes, start installation, and look at that. See how fast that is? We've connected to all six of these nodes from node one. Okay, actually node one, you see I'm still sitting here. Installation was successful. I can actually log out now. I don't have to look at this console anymore. And you can see, that through my browser, this is Chrome here, I'm, I'm able to, well, to initiate and, and uh, manage this installation. So what we're doing right now is, uh, first we're gonna refresh um, uh, uh, yum metadata. So you can see here, you can also go to details. And this, this doesn't actually refresh, so you kinda have to close it and reopen it to, to get a running log, which is all right. Um, or you can actually view the logs locally on the box itself. And notice we have to install JDK on these nodes, but we already have JDK on node one. Uh, we had to install JDK in order uh, to even get this CMF piece up, uh, the Cloudera Manager piece. So while this is going, you can actually log into the box itself. And uh, there is a directory under var log called Cloudera Manager Installer. And they, these were the log files from the installer that I ran that was um, using that uh, NCurses interface, that, that text-based uh, TUI, text user interface. And we also have a Cloudera 
SCM server directory created under var log, and this is the Cloudera Manager. SCM. CM stands for Cloudera Manager. No idea what the S is for. I guess I can look that up in the docs, but that would require reading. So I managed to pull all this off without actually reading anything, which is kind of cool. Uh, what we're doing right now is we're just going to install a bunch of RPMs. All of these nodes are actually, unfortunately, pulling this from the internet. Um, ah, well, um, this is taking a bit of time. But if you think about it, you know, I mean, we are setting up a cluster here. There are six nodes. Um, they are VMs, but there are six nodes here. Normally you would cache the software locally, you'd have a repository, you wouldn't be pulling this down from the internet. So uh, that's part of the problem here. Um, the reliability of the internet is uh, debatable and of course this is still uh, June 5th here. So this is the first day, so who knows how many people are uh, grabbing the same distribution. All right, so this guy appears to have stalled on download phase, which is unfortunate. So I'm going to abort installation and let's just see what happens. Aborted, look at that. See, so I can retry that failed host or I can just continue. And if I continue, I'm gonna be shy one node. Okay, so this is a uh, pretty neat. Numeric user ID of HDFS user varies across hosts. This may cause issues with NFS servers if... Well, that's interesting. Hmm. So you can see that it created a, a, a user across all the nodes, and uh, HDFS is the name of it, so ID HDFS. Okay, so if I SSH to node 2 and I do ID HDFS, no such user, of course, because I didn't actually complete on node 2. So ID HDFS... Yeah, it appears to be a different number. SSH node 4, ID HDFS. Oops. All right. Um, I'm not going to worry about it because it actually... Yeah, let's not worry about that for now. <laughs> um, but notice again, this is really cool. There's uh, sanity checks of all the common mistakes that customers may make. Now... Um, what else do we have here? We also have uh, the versions of everything that's been installed, which is cool. And I can run this inspection again. So if I run it again, um, it goes through, checks them all, and again, same problem, right? So I'm not gonna take the time to fix it. I'm just gonna continue and see what happens. Now I get to select what type of uh, cluster I would like to build. So core Hadoop will get you started. You know, I'll give you HDFS, MapReduce, um, and that, that's pretty much Hadoop. Um, but um, I'm going to go for all services only because that kind of, you know, just completely contaminates my cluster with everything. Now, uh, before I do that, actually, you'll notice that uh, there's an inspect role assignments, which is what I meant to click. And you'll notice that uh, Cloudera Manager attempts to pick same nodes to fill different roles. Now, name node. As an example here, you can only select one of these checkboxes. The interface is a little bit mm, inconsistent with what you would expect, but nonetheless, um, if you understand Hadoop and you understand HDFS more specifically in this case, uh, this would make sense. Okay, like you really, it's a mutually exclusive thing. You only need you need exactly one name node, um, and same with the checkpoint node. Um, now, yeah, so I'm not gonna go through what all these things do, but we're just gonna make sure that we have the roles the way we like them, assuming you wanna move them around. Of course, you don't have to click this button to inspect role assignments. You could just continue and trust it. Now, which directories will we use on our, rel on our relevant nodes? So the HDFS one service, which is our file system in this case, we're going to use this location for our data this location for our name node and this location for our checkpoint. Now, 
Um, generally speaking, you probably want to have, you know, um, let's say a second location or, you know, these would be actually your mount points, right, for your data node uh, directories. And for name node, you probably would want to have some redundancy here. So, you know, maybe uh, mount some uh, NFS mount here or something like that, right? And then it would be up to you to establish this ahead of time on that particular node on which you're locating the name node. So um, this just makes it a lot easier than editing XML configuration files, right? And this interface includes the, you know, a nice description of what's going on here too. So you don't really even have to RTFM in advance. So we're just gonna go with the defaults and you'll notice that really Cloud Era Manager just goes through and sets everything up for me. And that's kind of nice because I don't have to know anything. I'm using my mouse. Really, I, I haven't, uh, haven't had to really touch the keyboard. Whoops, <laughs> that's touching the keyboard. Hitting F1 in the browser, not a wise move. Well, at least it didn't break anything. So there it is. I'm one node short of six nodes. And um, there's a demonstration of just how quickly you can get a cluster set up with a bunch of reasonably reliable nodes. Uh, let's say you've got a little problem with, uh, <laughs> with one uh, like I had here. Now, it wasn't a problem. I just was impatient. I didn't want to wait for those RPMs to finish downloading on that node. So, um, yeah, this is not bad, actually. I mean, you can see, would I be able to do these steps myself faster than Cloudera Manager? Well, maybe. But I, as you noticed earlier, make little typos and things like that. This makes it a little easier than doing everything by hand. So um, this is not meant to be a review of Cloudera Manager, nor is it a, um, uh, nor, nor do I um, promote it or work for Cloudera or anything like that. Um, it's just another way to get Hadoop started and um, certainly a lot easier than editing a bunch of text files and uh, manually creating startup scripts or making sure you check config them, et cetera, et cetera, right? So there you go. Um, kind of a fun way for me to spend the evening. And it is, yeah, time for me to head back to the hotel. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. And uh, this video was a little longer than I expected, but uh, enjoy. <laughs>